The field. Every neighborhood has one. Grass, concrete, or dirt. The stage is the same. The rules, unwavering. And the goals, beautiful. It goes in! It's unbelievable! Now, in its 107th year, America's oldest soccer tournament is back. The hometown hero! One cup, open to all. The 2022 Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Rio Tinto Stadium as play rolls on in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup third round. The MLS teams are involved now, and in Real Salt Lake playing host to Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC. Alongside Gary Bailey, my name is Neil Rule. Happy to have you all with us. And, of course, when you're talking about the U.S. Open Cup, you're talking about a long lineage of history as a matter of fact, the oldest annual team sports tournament played in the U.S. If you lose, you're out. That's the way that it goes. And, Gary, no more amateur sides left. This is when the MLS sides and the pro sides step in here and assume control. Yeah, there were two amateur sides, both losing today. FC Motown going to extra time and penalties before they bowed out against Rochester. But, yeah, this is where the MLS teams should be strong enough. But there are teams both USL, USL League One, who have had a few surprises this season already. And tonight's no exception. With the MLS teams making big changes, it might leave them a little bit vulnerable. Absolutely. How did the Northern Colorado Hailstorm get here? Well, this is how. It was a red card that was assessed to Irvin Parra, and his services will not be available to Northern Colorado here tonight. So they played a good portion of the match with 10 men, but Gary, it did not matter. It didn't. They went into extra time, six minutes of extra time. McLean passing it to Jerry Dedun. And Jerry sticks it in the back of the net against a team, the Switchbacks, who were 100% in the USL up until that point. So it was a fantastic victory for the visitors of North Colorado Hailstorm. In their very first match, they beat the Switchbacks. Absolutely. Real Salt Lake at home in Rio Tinto Stadium. They are fired up. They are ready to go. Let's check out the starting 11s for both sides and some turnover for Real Salt Lake. Big time turnover. The only player that remains from the recent hammering by NYCFC is Tate Schmidt. Otherwise, it's a completely changed side. So 10 changes. Very difficult to get bonding when you change that many players. For Northern Colorado, Storm, one or two extra new players in. So we are ready to roll. Third round U.S. Open Cup match underway from Rio Tinto Stadium. Neil Rule alongside my broadcast partner, former Manchester United and English national team goalkeeper Gary Bailey. Happy to have you all along for the ride as we get things rolling early on as that ball headed away by Bodie Davis. And Gary, this is a Real Salt Lake team a little bit salty right now, coming off that 6-0 loss at NYCFC. Now, granted, they have turned over a lot of the lineup, but I would imagine that feeling kind of permeates, doesn't it? Yeah, never good. Just giving the ball away here as well, putting themselves under some pressure. But after a good start, no wins in the last four. As you mentioned, hammered 6-0 by NYCFC last match and conceded 10 goals in the last four games. Not a good situation to be in. And with all these changes to the Open Cup lineup, it does leave you a little bit vulnerable. We saw last night Columbus Crew up against Detroit from the USL, and they made 11 changes, and they ended up getting knocked out of the US Open Cup. So for real Salt Lake, even though they're at home, all these changes, players are going to have to figure out how to work with each other, how to understand each other. It might leave them vulnerable against this very plucky Northern Colorado hailstorm side. Bodie Davis plays it back. Another one of the homegrown contract contingent for Real Salt Lake. Bit of a misplay there. And a turnover. It's Bobby Pierre sent that over the line. That will give the opportunity. Denzo Ulysses will walk up. He was signed by Inter Miami back in 2020. Also played for the Haitian national team in the Olympic qualifiers in 2020 as well. All volleyed out of the Top of the box, Norte Norti trying to make a go with it. But instead, Real Salt Lake look to keep their 
first possession of the evening so far. Cody Davis just uh, putting that one out of out of play and in terms of the run of luck and things that go your way RSL uh, RSL have lost their last three Open Cup matches at home so sometimes you know, <laughs> things work for you or they don't they lost in 2016 against Seattle Sporting KC 2018 and LAFC 2019 of course nothing the last two years because of COVID so for their fans watching RSL, don't make any assumptions that you're going to get through to the next round. You've got to work for it. You've got to earn the right. And this is a team that surprised Colorado Springs switchbacks who had won a 100% record going into their match in the USL. So you have to give them respect here, even if you are an MLS outfit. And has been the case. We have seen USL League One triumph over the MLS in this US Open Cup. There's a whistle. Foul will go against Northern Colorado. Stefan Lukic looking displeased. Let's ch check it out again. Everton just accelerating there. To be fair, I think he does get the ball. Just he might get the player as well. Uh, hence the decision for Stefan Lukic. Started in that Open Cup game in midfield against the switchbacks. Tate Schmidt. Stepping over it for Real Salt Lake. Schmidt played his college soccer at Louisville. And instead, it's swung in by Bodie Davis. Salt Lake will resume the possession. Four minutes in, Neil Rule, Gary Bailey with you. Happy to have you with us. U.S. Open Cup, third round, coming down the stretch. Of course, the draw will be tomorrow at noon for the fourth round. May 10th, May 11th is when it will all go down. You're, you're feeling that energy, aren't you, Gary, that U.S. Open <laughs> Cup energy. We've seen some magic. Oh, we have. The Detroit match last night that we did, Columbus crew really got put to the sword there at the end and Chicago Fire got knocked out last night as well against lower opposition at home so again another warning for RSL not to take this lightly and I think there's a number of players on the home side who have a point to prove coming back from injury Nick Bessler, Justin Glad, Rubio Rubin just managed 37 minutes on the bench on Sunday so players who want to get back in want to get into the first team want to show the manager Pablo Mastroni that they are they are ready and so there's a lot for them to be playing for as well tonight. Christopher Garcia, happy with the touch, played that one over the line. Garcia was loaned to the Swedish second division last year. Is that ball headed back up by Bodie Davis? Real Salt Lake, 3-2-3. Three, three. They're sixth in the MLS Western Conference, as we talked about earlier, coming off that 6-0 loss. NYCFC, they will play at Portland Saturday at 10 o'clock. Served up towards the box coming off the line. Tomas Olsen make the grab. Former MLS draft pick by the Colorado Rapids. Third overall pick in 2018. Played for the FIFA U15 World Cup team back in 2015. He's a career pro, played for Las Vegas Lights, FC Tucson. You mentioned that 6-0 loss against NYCFC. The worst defeat in the 18-year history of Real Salt Lake, equaling a 6-0 hammering back by Metro Stars in 2006. Pablo Mastroni, the head coach, certainly decorated coach, played 11 seasons with Colorado, had 65 matches played for the United States national team. was the head coach of the Colorado Rapids from 2014 to 2017. It's probably going to be a little bit physical this game. I don't think the League One side, Hailstorm, are going to stand on any ceremonies here. If they can, <laughs> if they can let the MLS Giants know that they're around, they certainly will do. Got a big man up front in Lachlan McLean, the Australian. He could cause a few problems. Lissy will play it back to the keeper, Olsen. 
Mike Evans. He is college soccer at Cal Poly, turned pro after his first season. Now some pressure from Real Salt Lake. And Fola has to act quickly. Eamon Zayed in his first season. He was hired August 11th of 2021, had a long pro career in the Irish First Division, also 26 goals and 59 matches played for Indy 11. Eight matches as well for the Libya national team. Very entertaining conversation <laughs> with Eamon Zayed. He will tell you how he feels about things. <laughs> yes, yeah. He's, uh, he's had some experience at Shamrock Rovers and, and Derry City. An exciting time for him. This is only their fourth game in their franchise's history. The, the amazing thing is their first game was an Open Cup win away at Colorado Springs Switchbacks, who had quite a few of their top players playing that day. It wasn't that they had massive changes. They had three or four of their regular defenders, Tristan Hodge and Oxford, Zach Zandi, Colton Belmar, Elvis Amo came on as a sub, and they still lost. Scully into the box, and that ball is cut out. Over the line, Nick Bessler did the job. Eamon Zayed, in our conversation with him earlier this week, said this Northern Colorado Hellstorm side have been together less than two weeks before they were out there in that <laughs> match playing in the U.S. Open Cup. So they're still figuring some things out if you boil it all down. Unknown quantity, but you would expect, I mean, the, the quality of the players for Real Salt, like you would expect them to to be able to win this match. But we've seen so many shocks in the cup already that you can take nothing for granted. Vanacore Decker, the left side of the 18. Here's Breck Evans, his cross played away. Solid defensive play made by Christopher Garcia. Another one of the Real Salt Lake players on one of the homegrown contracts. Corner kick. Or will it be a throw? Let's see. Looks like it'll be a throw. Arthur Rogers will trigger. Rogers, 40 matches played the last two seasons for Hartford Athletic, and in fact, it will be a corner. And he was a good player for Hartford Athletic in the USL. He can put a quality ball into the box. Sends that one towards the back post, and it's headed up in the air. We will do it again. Deflected off the Real Salt Lake back line. David Ochoa getting the nod here today. Real Salt Lake Academy made his MLS debut back in 2020 against Sporting Kansas City. And his first career clean sheet last year against Nashville. Remember your first career clean sheet, Gary? Manchester United? I can't think that far back. <laughs> <laughs> Arthur Rogers sends that one in. Once again, it's headed away, and we'll do it one more time. Chris Goss here at the near post there just doing his job. A 19-year-old. You've got to stay vigilant. You don't want to go one down to the lower league sides because then, of course, their, their tails are up and they're coming at you from every direction. You've got to work hard to defend. Rodgers will send it in one more time, and that time Ochoa will confidently make the grab. Good catch from the keeper, and a little bit of pressure early on in the match. That's what you want your keeper to come and do, just calm everything down. Little reminder to the hailstorm that you've got a good man in goals, and if they put the ball too close to him, he'll come and catch it every time. The ball sent ahead for Garcia. Garcia makes a move. Garcia into the 18, that shot is blocked. Good job done by Leo Fola. A lovely touch there from Chris Garcia. Close control, look at that, just brings it back. He's got the pace, head up, he looks for someone around. And he finds Jasper Lollison. That ball goes over the line. Goal kick coming up now for Tomas Olsen. Northern Colorado coming off a 2-1 loss to the Charlotte Independents in the 91st minute. 
see Loffelson there just putting a little bit of pressure on. Nice high press coming. They're looking for more players to join the high press. And they get turnover ball. Andy Davis will send it back. But just 12 minutes and change into this one. And we've seen that a couple of times where Real Salt Lake all of a sudden out of nowhere will hit you with that high line. And they've created turnovers both times. Well, you would think against a lower opposition team, especially two levels lower from, from League One, that you would want to high press them. You would think, well, maybe they can't knock the ball around as well as we can. Maybe they can't play out under a high press. And, and you get good turnover ball in a dangerous area if you can do that. Christopher Garcia down. Wanted a whistle, but instead it'll be a goal kick coming up for the Hailstorm. Hailstorm will be next be in action on April 30th. They'll be at North Carolina FC. They're still finishing up their stadium, so they won't have a true home match until June, as a matter of fact. So they have bounced back and forth across the country. Ball flicked ahead. Be on the other side for Real Salt Lake. We only had three games. The, the first game was a win in the Open Cup, and then a draw and a loss in League One. So it's been a, a mixed start to this, this new franchise. I mean, you can't get much better than winning your opening game away against opposition from a higher level who are unbeaten, which was the case with Colorado Swings, a spring switchback. So an absolutely brilliant opening game for this new franchise, North Colorado Hailstorm. That whistle will sound against Nick Bessler. Bessler played his college soccer at Notre Dame on the national championship in 2013 with the takedown on the back of Norti. Yeah, it's a bit of a hand on the shoulder there that brought Norti down. You want to be giving free kicks away around your box to the likes of Northern Colorado Hailstorm. You've got big players, You've got a decent deliverer of the ball there in Rogers. And you're just asking for trouble if you give too many opportunities to this team. Scully and Rogers both standing over it. Rogers curls it towards the back post. Great anticipation. Ochoa never a doubt coming off the line to make the grab and wings it out looking to start the attack. And this will work. It's a 2v2 situation now for Real Salt Lake. Ruben up and the pass ahead. But Rubio Ruben did not connect. Loffelson there, just not quite with the right pace for Rubio Ruben. And that's, that's what might catch out this League One outfit, is the pace of, and how quick they are in transition, Rail Salt Lake, from defense to attack. The ability to knock accurate balls forward. And even here, the turning and the skills of the MLS team, it, it really, in theory, it should be way too much for the Hailstorm to deal with. This was a quick developing counterattack for Real Salt Lake. And it all, and Gary, I love this. And David Ochoa right there, when the goalkeepers look to start the attack. Yes, yes, it's a lovely ball out, isn't it? And just that final ball there from Loffelson, just not quite the right pace. But you're right, he's come and taken two crosses, David Ochoa, taken them really well, and then started that counterattack. Tate Schmidt. Sends a ball into the 18. Headed clear temporarily. Sent back in. The bicycle attempt will take a bounce up to Olsen. Not a ton on that. And Ruben get a piece of it. Rubio Ruben, 15 matches played for Tijuana in Liga MX back in 2015. Also played seven matches for the U.S. national team. Seventeenth minute, Rio Tinto Stadium, nil-nil the score. Real Salt Lake, Northern Colorado, Hailstorm FC. My name is Neil Rule, Gary Bailey, former Manchester United English national team keeper. The broadcast team here this evening. Happy to have you with us on ESPN Plus, your home. Lamar Hunt, U.S. Open Cup. What a run it's been here in the third round. Neil 
Hailstorm. Gets a ball up with it. Got some time on the ball, haven't they now? Hailstorm. Knock it long instead of trying to play through, but just settling into the game. It must be a little bit scary for them coming up against MLS opposition. You wonder what it's like. You're coming to a beautiful stadium. There's a decent crowd. You're a new franchise. Managers sort of just put things together very, very quickly. You don't know what to expect, but the longer you go on and you keep the score level, the more Northern Colorado Hellstorm will start to believe they might actually get something out of this game. And, and that's a problem for Real Salt Lake. All the changes they've made, 10 changes in total, just Tate Schmidt from the team that got hit 6-0 by NYCFC. So these players are not used to playing together. and They've got to try and figure things out as they go along. Rowan coming up as Cody Davis will make his way over. There's Garcia, defender a pass through. It's taken away as Rogers will turn with it. So Real Salt Lake trying to come through with the win. All five MLS teams in action tonight did get the win. Of course, Real Salt Lake, LAFC, the remaining side still to play. Austin FC playing against San Antonio FC right now as well. They are scoreless to start the second half. So the MLS, Gary, bouncing back yeah. after losing a couple sides yesterday. Well, bouncing think, back strong. I think those two losses last night to Chicago Fire and Columbus Crew maybe, maybe frightened a few MLS teams, and they went, okay, this maybe isn't going to be so easy as a lot of fans might think it will be. And I'm sure that was the, the locker room chat from Pablo Mastroni for the Real Salt Lake players. Like, don't take anything for granted here. You're up against good players. And you've already mentioned some of the players. I mean, Arthur Rogers at Hartford Athletic, the USL, Breck Evans from Memphis 901, USL. These are all decent teams. Cross sent up into the box. Ochoa will punch it out. Ethan Vanacore Decker was the target, but look at even off the punch of Ochoa, Real Salt Lake looking to mount a counter. Nifty pass sent through Martin Louise. That's Robert Cornwall, the captain there from Ireland, just uh, saying that it was a dive from Loffelson. I think he was also, I mean, it's a good tackle there as well. Firstly, and it's a definite foul there. I don't think there's any diving involved. Corn, Cornwall saying, no, it wasn't me. Cornwall, 34 matches played for Bohemian FC of the Irish Premier League. He moved around quite a bit. He was at Derry City, Shamrock Rovers, Shelbourne. So plenty of experience from the captain, Robert Cornwall. Jensen, the lead referee. Kelly Smith, Hurston Gilwad. Ball sent into the 18, is headed away. Jordan Downs, fourth official here tonight. And that foul will go against Garcia. As we said, at Rio Tinto Stadium, 4,450 feet above sea level. It's a pity Irvin Perez not playing for Hailstorm. Just looking at the setup now would have been a great possibility for him to have done something. Good player signed from Charlotte Independence. And he was their lead player and got sent off in the opening match no. against the switchbacks. Absolutely. Certainly an offensive weapon. Was the first ever player in USL Championship to have a double-digit goal and double-digit assist total in the same season. So that just goes to show you what an offensive weapon he is, but due to that red card, as we talked about earlier, not available. It was a bad red card because he he put an elbow up to hit one of the switchback players and then and then threw it a second time deliberately. First time might have been by error, but the second time was a deliberate one. Bad, and I guess he's sitting at home now watching this, thinking, I wish I hadn't have done that. I'd love to be on this field taking on the quality of players that you see in front of you in Rail Salt Lake. Chipped ahead, Vanacore Decker in the corner as it's played out by Brody Davis. Fifty six degrees of temperature at the opening kick. 
Evans comes over. Breck Evans, who played for Memphis 901 last year in USL Championship, was a team captain for North Texas when they won the 2019 USL League One Championship, and Ochoa steps up to make the grab again. Of course, Ricardo Pepe on that side as well, who's gone on to national team fame as of late. Yeah, some, some quality players there, which is why, again, RSL will be wise not to take anything for granted here. And we just saw a header from, from big Lachlan McLean that went to Ochoa, but he won that header in the box, and he's going to be a threat from all set pieces. He's got six foot three, the big Australian. And he was the one who had the assist for the goal against Colorado Springs switchbacks. Salt Lake will work it back. B. Davis again. Six matches played for Real Monarchs. Last year scored four goals. Bessler, Garcia, Davis. Sends it up ahead looking for that left corner. Wilson had to be alert. Going backwards, the goalkeeper. Never easy when you've got your post behind you. Have a look as he's going backwards. He's going to make sure this doesn't collide with the post and, and drop the ball, but he manages to do that really well. A decent start. You're more or less halfway through the first half and at nil-nil. As I say, the confidence in this League One side will start to grow the longer this sort of result stays. And I guess the, the nervousness of the crowd will start to build as well. So we'll go against Northern Colorado, and that will actually be a booking. So yellow card in the books. Lissy. See it again. It's not much on its own, but it might be accumulation. I think he warned him a few minutes ago as well, but. He's saying it's the first time. Doesn't seem to be much in it, to be honest. It's early for you know for a defender. It's early in the game to get a yellow card. Now you're, you're tiptoeing for the rest of the match. Ball driven up towards a frame, but Olsen strong to make the grab, and he wings one out, looking to trigger the attack. Covering is Everton. You're talking about the, the Hellstorm coach, Eamon Zayed, the Irishman, and uh, it was quite funny because he, he, he was speaking about RSL's 6 0 hammering. He said, I wish they hadn't have got hammered. He said, They're, they're going to bounce back against us. He said, I wish they'd have won well and they'd be a lot more relaxed. But you know, sort of tongue in cheek. But it, it, the truth is, this team at home have to come firing out. They have to give their fans a decent result after after the shellacking they got in New York. And Tate Schmidt, who's the only player from that 11, he gave away a penalty and he had a few problems defensively, as they all did. So he'll be looking for a decent match. And there is Eamon Zayed. Sharp-looking sweater on right yeah. there. I like it. Garcia with the touch, lets him down as it creeps over the line. We've seen a lot of Christopher Garcia so far in this match, and Real Salt Lake has done most of their attacking up the right side. Both teams have settled into the match. Real Salt Lake with a 52-48 edge in possession right now. Sounds about right. Making a move, Pierre Reedy. Ball swung out to the left side. Rubio. Garcia. He tries to turn, steps through, and does. But can't beat the second defender. Loffelson touches it. Cross is headed away. Volley attempt is strong. Olsen has to go down to the turf to make the stop. There's quite a bit of pace on that from just outside the D. 
It's a strike from a long way out. You'd expect the goalkeeper to get behind it. Some, some tough tackling going on there on the edge of the box. But, you know, it's, it's, when the ball gets cleared, it's, it's all of, what, almost 30 yards out. And goalkeeper body behind the ball, no problem with that. Like the pace of that volley attempt. Maybe surprised Olsen a little bit, but he was in good position to make the grab. Let's see. We'll restart everything. Toss in right along the line. Marco McLean was a target, didn't connect. Awful send. Sends it back. Now gets it back. Chips it ahead. Nobody on the other end. Tomas Olsen will collect it. And over the last couple minutes, Gary, it seems as though Real Salt Lake may be settling into things, finding their stride a little bit in terms of offensive possession. Yeah, but I think the same can be said for Northern Colorado Hailstorm. They're settling into this match. They're growing in confidence that they can they can do something. And of course, players from from lower leagues are, are out to catch the eye of coaches watching. They know there's a big viewership for a match like this. They've got top class coaches such as Pablo Mastroni, who's always on the eye out for any talent. And if you think back a, a few years, Florida Soccer Soldiers, I think it was back in 2018, they had a number of players got signed after their good cup run, including Valentin Sabello, who went on to play for Charlotte Independent. So all these all these players here in white will be thinking, you know what, I put on a good performance today, and you never know if my phone starts ringing tomorrow. So again, just to make the point for RSL, this is not going to be an easy match, and they're going to have to work hard to, to put this League One side down. They've got so much going for them, this team in white, so much excitement to be here and to play in a stadium like this and against a team like this, that they're going to give it not just a normal 100%, but it's 120, 130, but everything they have got goes into this match today. There's some space giving for Real Salt Lake to work. Good build up and an overlapping run by Garcia. Lost played away. It was cut out by Cornwall. But Real Salt Lake looking like they're beginning to really assert themselves here offensively, starting those overlapping runs and looking to make something happen. Yeah, they're probing nicely, aren't they? They haven't ma managed to sort of get a really good move going, but they've been around the edges of the box, around the fringes, some nice interplay, and you, you do get the, the sense that they're, they're getting closer and closer to finding a breakthrough. Everton will win a throw. Started his career in the lower Brazilian leagues. Been a grinder. Joined Real Salt Lake from Spall in Serie A in Italy. 24 matches played. Excuse me, 25 matches played for the MLS side. That ball sent in. And it's played away. And it will go out for a corner. That's the German Jasper Loffelsen again causing problems around the fringes of the box there. And it's his determination that gets him on the end of this. You just don't quite see it in that moment, but the 24-year-old German just creating a lot of problems there for the Hailstorm defense. Hey, Schmidt. Fire up the third corner of the evening. Schmidt curls it towards a back post. Let's head it away, and another throw coming up for Real Salt Lake. They're getting the corners, they're getting the restarts, as you said. Maybe not the, the quality on the set pieces that they want as of yet. But Gary, as you know, can't go to that well too many times if you're northern Colorado. Hailstorm can't continue to give up these corners and all these set pieces. Yeah, sure. I mean, eventually somebody's going to fall the way of the home side. It might be a deflection. Uh, it might be a poor clearance, whatever it is. But they're also, they're also hoping for some sort of counter-attack. They haven't offered much. There's a couple of crosses early on that David Ochoa did well with, and then since then, it's been a little bit quiet in attack for the Hailstorm. They're just looking for one or two opportunities where they can have a go at this RSL defense. Here come Real Salt Lake again. 
Tate Schmidt into the box. Once again, nobody on the other side for Real Salt Lake, but they will give it another go. Bodie Davis. Everton. Lukic looked to make his move. Couple of defenders, though, marking him. Yeah, nice play there by Hellstorm just for Lukic to bring that under control. They won their header. I think it was McLean who won that header, but now they've lost possession, having done so well to get it. They have lost that possession, and now they've, all the white shirts have got to get themselves behind the ball. Chipped up above everybody one more time. Olsen steps up again to make the grab. Just over a half hour into this one. Neil Rule, Gary Bailey with you. Our Hunt U.S. Open Cup third round. Yeah, I'm sure Coach Eamon Zayed and his players are, you know, one third of the match done, and they're well, look at this pressure coming in. <laughs> lots of lots of pressure from the home side, but they've played through it yet again. They're getting more and more comfortable. The League One side. Cornwall. Left side play. Brett Evans. Crosses it through the D. Tate Schmidt plays it up towards midfield, but once again, unable to connect. Rogers under some heavy pressure. So now Real Salt Lake choosing to fall back. They have picked their spots. Look at this. Look at this from the hailstorm, just knocking it around. Making their way through. Vanacore Decker. Lukic stepping over. He sends a pass up top. Norti brings it to the right side. Sally did good to keep that ball from crossing the goal line, but unable to do much else with it. But Real Salt Lake will give him a throw. A nice little spell there for the Hellstorm. A bit of pressure on the home side, and they, they knocked it around. They kept the possession. Nice little one-touch play. Got it wide. And now they've forced the home side to kick the ball straight out into touch. So, again, it'll give them a bit more confidence that there's a possibility of coming away from this ground with the result here tonight. So the foul is called. I understand they're going to penalty kicks in Louisville. Louisville, St. Louis City 2 of the MLS Next Pro League. So that, big surprise. Yeah, I'm sure Lou City have rested some of their regular players because if that was their full strength team, you would expect them to have gone through. And I think quite a few teams especially from the MLS, taking this opportunity to play their sort of reserve players, players coming back from injury and long layoffs and players trying to find form. And that's why it does open the door to the teams from the lower divisions to get surprise results. Sent up, some bodies going down. Officials say play on, much to the surprise. That's where Laufel said, can't believe it. Ball played in there and Loffelson goes for it, as does big Robert Cornwell. And I think it's just a coming together of feet, nothing more than that at all. And there's some big boys at the back there for the hailstorm. And uh, they're gonna they're gonna put their weight around in this game and leave a few marks wherever they can. <laughs> that pass chipped up. It's a pretty good looking pass. Clean. Get to it. Choa. Well, Choa, even when he goes to get the ball, he's he's fired up and ready to go get it. He wants to trigger, man. I think a lot I like of these it. players, yeah, they're trying to, as we mentioned earlier, trying to prove the point that they're good enough to start games. And like Mathen Goal has, has made some fantastic saves, but he watched six go past him in the last match. So no reason why David Ochoa can't put his hand up for that job. And that's what every one of these players is trying to do here for RSL. 
Ochoa, just 21 years old from California, was in the Guadalajara Academy, Real Salt Lake Academy as well. I like it though, Gary. 21 years old though, has that brash confidence. And here comes an opportunity, temporarily anyway, for Real Salt Lake. But I like that confidence and that desire to trigger the offense because I think that goes overlooked a lot. The, the keeper can trigger things offensively. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And especially when coming for crosses, because that's when the opposition have a lot of their players in the box. You come and take a cross under pressure. It's a it's a perfect time to, to have a, a counter attack and a quick attacking transition. Pablo Mastroni, I think, still lobbying for that foul call <laughs> back towards the top of the box. As managers will do. <laughs> is also probably feeling the pressure. I mean, obviously, of the, of the last result and the, the, the couple of results in recent weeks, no wins in four and that 6-0 hammering. It's not a, not a comfortable space for a manager. And he, he needs a good result here today, you would think, and does Pablo Mastroni. And you know, if they were one or two nil up, he'd probably be relaxed on the bench. But at nil-nil against a USL one team, there's just no way he can afford to have a bad result here tonight. People will start to grumble a bit more and, and fingers start getting pointed so he's gonna he's gonna want his team to get a goal and get themselves in the lead Garcia gives one a go nearly tucked it inside that right post Wilson had to be sharp to punch that one away yeah, I'm sure it was meant as a cross but <laughs> it's a danger for the keepers that it can squeeze in there and uh, Olsen that, that doing well yeah yeah did well to read that corner coming up their fourth quick corner by Schmidt cross again by Garcia scissor attempt sent over top by Justin Glad Glad one of the few veterans playing tonight for Real Salt Lake he's the captain over 160 matches played for RSL signed a home going contract back in 2014. He was with their academy in 2012. Has a goal this year. Now playing with confidence, Hailstorm. <laughs> Just knocking it around the back. That high press at the first sort of 10 minutes had Hailstorm worried. They're now comfortably playing through it. But they haven't really tested a Choa, haven't have they? Since those no. first couple of crosses in the box, they just haven't been able to manufacture anything of real danger. Real Salt Lake still holding about 52% of the possession. Up the left side. Here, Reedy into the box. Here's an opportunity. That shot is blocked off the foot of Rubio. Another corner coming yep. up for Real Salt Lake. Yeah, good defending. Nice play into the box here, and Rubio takes it down. Good first touch, lines himself up, and they're blocking these shots. But as you said, eventually one shot just won't be blocked, or it'll sneak through, or it's a handball and a penalty, and. The pressure will tell, but so far, so good for the visiting side. Corner number five coming up. Davis sends it in. That one's headed down, and the shot goes over top of the bar. Was it deflected out? That was Bobby Pierre that got his foot on it. So we will do the corner again. Finally, some execution on a set piece. Yeah, Bessler heads it back in, and Pierre just over the top. But that's a good chance. Six, seven yards out. Got to get over the ball and get it down. Bessler doing really well to head that one back into the danger area. So we'll move it around to the right side. This will be Tate Schmidt. 42nd minute. Corner serve towards the back post. It was flicked ahead, but nothing more from Rubio. Well, they seem to be weathering the storm. Hailstorm, if you excuse the, uh, <laughs> the weather pun. I mean, basically, that's what they would have said. And I'm sure Eamon Zai said, guys, if you can come in half time, nil-nil, happy days. At least, you know, we, 
we're in with a shout and we, then we can look at the second half and, and go from there. And that's what they've done. They've, they've had a few little moments real Salt Lake, but nothing that's really bothered Thomas Olsen too much. I'll never fault anybody for taking the low-hanging fruit here. <laughs> never, ever, ever. That's usually in my repertoire. <laughs> Ball bounces free. Pierre Reedy makes a turn with it. Played his college soccer at Penn State. Here comes an opportunity now for Northern Colorado. Making the move. McLean into the 18. Hesitates. Taking off the ball nicely. Very solid. Yeah, it just shows you there can be a threat. He's a strong player up front. McLean uses his body really well. And eventually, he was double teamed and lost possession. But they, they can score. They're not going to get many opportunities, Northern Colorado Hellstorm. You wouldn't think so anyway. And it just needs one that just flies in the back of the net, one little special moment, and they could have RSL scrambling. Bit of a boot issue there. I believe that's Justin Glad. Brick Evans has got this long throw and he chooses to use it and McLean is normally his target. Long throw into the 18, found its mark. Evans steps up, sends it into the mixing bowl, headed away. Volley attempt and that will go long to the left side of the post. Sometimes I wonder with teams when they make a lot of changes. And we saw it with Columbus Crew last night making 11 changes. If you keep a core of players that have played together, it's a little bit easier to, to, to mold a team. But, of course, coaches have to give other players a rest and they have to give fringe players a chance. So you understand why there's so many changes. But it's difficult for them to, to gel together without having played any matches as a team before. You know, just put... 11 players out and say, right, you guys, you know, this is the this is the sort of shape. Go out there and do the job. Difficult when you don't know, when you haven't had players next to you for the last four or five games. You don't know where they're going to go, who's going to make a near post run, far post run. That's the challenge here tonight for Real Salt Lake. Garcia called for that foul. Extra there. With the push, and that is Brad Jensen. He's probably telling him right now. Garcia doesn't agree. Yeah, he didn't. <laughs> which keeps the streak of 1.9 million consecutive <laughs> players disagreeing with the whistle against him. Yeah, the facial language told a story there. <laughs> so we have had a fairly quick moving first half, and the whistle sounds. So, hardly any stoppage time. We are through 45 minutes. Nil-nil is the score to conclude the first half. So Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC, the USL League One side, holding their own against the MLS big boys. Real Salt Lake, Northern Colorado Hailstorm, scoreless through 45. We'll be back, get you the second half of action. This is Lamar Hunt, U.S. Open Cup. Best things about life. For me, one of the best things about life is that we keep moving forward. We discover exciting new technologies, redefine who we are and how we want to lead our lives. Basically, we choose what we want our future to look like. So what's yours going to be? keep telling you this because I'm, I'm not your mama.
But you're my big brother. You spend too much money. It's not that bad. Our electricity bill is double of what it usually is. I can't front that. Good thing I've got Chime. They spot eligible members mm -hmm. up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with no overdraft fees. Oh, for those unexpected surprises, huh? You lucky Chime's got your back. Wait, is this mine? Okay, so Chime's got my back, but you don't? Girl. Betrayal. Now more than ever, it's important to support our local economy. That's why when I fly, I fly ROA. I'm defeated, feel mistreated. I'm so angry, I'm singing a song. Cause I'm paying so much for home internet and that's just wrong. I've got T-Mobile home internet. I feel happy. Great. Very happy. Good for you. Look how much money I'm saving right now. Wait, really? There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, one core. Bro, Introducing T-Mobile 5G home internet. Just 50 bucks a month, it's that simple. your first shave with the Philips One Blade First Shave. Designed to protect your skin against nicks, cuts and burns. Hack your first shave. Blackness in full and at home. In the Anscape. For me, one of the best things about life is that we keep moving forward. We discover exciting new technologies, redefine who we are and how we want to lead our lives. Basically, we choose what we want our future to look like. So what's yours going to be? Teaching him to ride a bike? That's Parenting 101. But mom, get green light and teach him what it takes to buy a bike. Nice shot. Crushing chores, getting paid, and buying a... Ooh, cool bike. Then, teach him how to buy stock in a bike company. Teach him how to be smart about money, and he'll go far. Super far! Oh, hey, mom! Navigate the world of money together. Invest in your best investment. Green light. I'm defeated, feel mistreated. I'm so angry, I'm singing a song. Cause I'm paying so much for home internet and that's just wrong. I've got T-Mobile home internet. I feel happy. Great. Very happy. Good for you. Look how much money I'm saving right now. Wait, really? There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, one core. Introducing T-Mobile 5G home internet. Just 50 bucks a month, it's that simple. Well, I prefer to hit the trail and greenways on my bike. When I do fly, I fly ROA. Hi, I'm Elena, and a little thing I love about the Smokehouse Barbecue Bacon Sandwich is the barbecue sauce. There's something in that sauce. When it meshes with the chicken and the bacon and the bread all together, I mean, it is like an explosion of flavor. Hi, I'm Richard, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the cheesy goodness at the bottom. The way that it combines with the crispy baked layer at the top is like that added flavor, that extra jazz to it. Once the fork reaches my mouth, that's it. Pack your first shave with the Philips One Blade First Shave. Designed to protect your skin against nicks, cuts, and burns. Pack your first shave. You don't have to struggle with anxiety and depression. HERS makes it easy to access trusted mental health medication 100% online. 
Take our free assessment and get matched with a licensed mental health provider who can prescribe evidence-backed medication if it's right for you. Plus, get free check-ins and care from the comfort of home. Join the 80% of customers who saw improved symptoms thanks to treatment. Start your free mental health assessment at forhers.com slash mind. Keep telling you this because I'm, I'm not your mama. But you're my big brother. You spend too much money. It's not that bad. Our electricity bill is double of what it usually is. I can't front that. Good thing I've got Chime. They spot eligible members mm -hmm. up to $200 on debit card purchases and cash withdrawals with no overdraft fees. Oh, for those unexpected surprises, huh? You lucky Chime's got your back. Wait, is this mine? Okay, so Chime's got my back, but you don't? Girl. Betrayal. At Torque, we're building the self-driving transportation of tomorrow. But when I fly commercial, I fly ROA. I'm defeated, feel mistreated. I'm so angry, I'm singing a song. Cause I'm paying so much for home internet and that's just wrong. I've got T-Mobile home internet. I feel happy. Great. Very happy. Good for you. Look how much money I'm saving right now. Wait, really? There's no hidden fees, no price hikes, one core. Bro, Introducing T-Mobile 5G home internet. Just 50 bucks a month. It's that simple. Elena, and the little thing I love about the Smokehouse Barbecue Bacon Sandwich is the barbecue sauce. There's something in that sauce when it meshes with the chicken and the bacon and the bread all together. I mean, it is like an explosion of flavor. Hi, I'm Richard, and a little thing I love about Chick-fil-A's mac and cheese is the cheesy goodness at the bottom. The way that it combines with the crispy baked layer at the top is like that added flavor, that extra jazz to it. Once the fork reaches my mouth, that's it. As a young man, my hair started to thin. I couldn't sleep, I was stressed about it, and I took a pharmaceutical drug that unfortunately caused severe side effects such as sexual dysfunction. I felt like I had to choose between my health and my hair. Nutrafol is a drug-free natural supplement that targets the multiple root causes to thinning hair in three to six months. It gave me my hair, my health, and my confidence back. Get started at Nutrafol.com slash man. Got a minute? Got a hose? Then you can have the best lawn on the block. How? With Sunday. They send you exactly what your lawn needs right when it needs it. Is that easy? You bet your grass it is. Sunday takes the hard work out of yard work. No more guessing, no weird chemicals. Just lawn care that's better for kids, pets, and the planet. So ditch the old ways for Sunday fun days. Go to GetSunday.com and use code SUNDAYFUNDAY for 20% off your smart lawn plan. Back inside Rio Tinto Stadium, nil-nil the score through the first 45 minutes of play. Neil Rule, Gary Bailey back with you as we take a look at how everything went down here in that first 45 minutes of play, but not before we get you caught up with the other scores in the U.S. Open Cup. 
third round. Of course, these matches took place yesterday. A couple of MLS sides, Gary, taking the fall. Chicago Fire at home against uh, Union Omaha. Uh, so that's also two divisions lower, and they lost on penalties. So again, a little warning for Real Salt Lake. Be careful. We did the match Detroit City against Columbus Crew. Detroit were 1-0 down, came back to knock out the MLS side. That was a fantastic match. It was pumping there in Detroit. Um, otherwise, it generally went the MLS's way for the rest of those matches. Yeah, that was the story this evening. San Jose Earthquakes really taking care of business against Bay City's FC. The Louisville result, certainly, that we just got. That probably stole the show here tonight. 9-8 the edge over St. Louis City 2 in the penalties. So that went on for a while. Orlando City FC, however, Ooh. falling to the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Oh, oh, oh. And Rowdies are a fantastic USL side. And again, another little warning for RSL. Be careful. Absolutely. All the West Coast matches will get going any second now, the highlights from the first 45 minutes of play, Real Salt Lake, Gary, a lot of set pieces, a lot of corners. Uh, there was a little half-hearted bicycle attempt there, but Tomas Olsen was on top of the situation. Yeah, there wasn't, there wasn't enough of, an, of, of a connection there from Rubio to really worry Tomas Olsen. Down the right-hand side, Chris Garcia was lively, decent ball in there, which the goalkeeper had to deal with from Bodie Davis. Again, not a problem for Thomas Olsen. There was nothing that really had the goalkeeper worried. Garcia, once again, the threat. Nice little jinking run here and whips the ball in. And this time it's a miss hit that nearly sneaks in the near post. And there were lots of corners and set pieces. This one good. Bessler knocks it back and then Pierre shoots over. That was probably the best chance of the entire match so far. Not taken by the youngster, knocked over the bar. Have a look, shots on target, two for Salt Lake, zero for the visitors. They haven't done much to be fair, Northern Colorado Hellstorm, but they're happy to take it to nil-nil all the way to the end and take it to penalties if they can. That would be, I guess, their aim. For real Salt Lake, Neil, they have to take it up a notch. They have to be more incisive around the edge of the box. They've got to create better opportunities. Uh, they haven't really shown that much that's impressive as yet but there's a second half to come and I've got a funny feeling that Pablo Mastroni would have had a few sharp words to say to his players a little bit of a warning that they need to make things happen in the second half uh, Gary it comes down to just being more dynamic doesn't it like uh, somebody has to be dynamic out there yeah and quality in that final third and the stats show that that, that RSL had a, have an expected goals of 0.48 so half a goal uh, for Hellstorm, it's 0.04. In other words, nothing. So they haven't offered anything going forward, the team in white. But I don't think that's the deal here. I think they're quite happy to defend and maybe just try and counter attack, maybe get a set piece they can knock in in the last 10 minutes. They're, they're, they're in this game for real. Hellstorm are in this game. And uh, RSL are going to have to, as you say, create something a little bit special in that final third if they're going to get themselves a breakthrough. These fans expect, especially after the 6-0 hammering, they expect something from their side tonight. Real Salt Lake will have the possession in the second half. The U.S. Open Cup third round is underway from Rio Tinto Stadium. Real Salt Lake out of the MLS, Northern Colorado Hellstorm, FC out of USL League One. My name is Neil Rule, Gary Bailey, former Manchester United English national team keeper with you tonight. Tomas Olsen will scoop it up in front of Rubio. Wing it out to the left side. And we'll see exactly how Pablo Mastroni wants to play this one. Where will they, will they go back to an attack? We saw it at select times where, where they would press high, but not consistently. Yeah, I think they should press high more often because, again, they're against a side that's not used to playing through that high press or high press of quality. And they did it for the first 10, 15 minutes and slacked off a little bit. Uh, I would think the manager would be demanding that they, they really pressurize the hailstorm. You know, make them sweat everything. Make them really battle to get out of their own half. Garcia does that. As his cross is played out for a corner. He's been lively, Garcia. I've, I've been impressed with him. He's really threatened on that right-hand side. But... Other than that, there hasn't been a lot to get excited about from the team going forward. 
You know, Rubio's offered a little odd moment here and there, but but not enough. Uh, they need to do more of of what Chris Garcia is doing. He's been lively. Tate Schmidt line up this corner. In the last four corners, service in. Double punch by Ochoa, or excuse me, by Olsen. And Ochoa off the line to make the play. He's probably looking to get involved. He hasn't had much to do after those couple of crosses he came and took really well. And he's itching to anyway. Yep. Like, that's what he wants to do. That's in his DNA. I love it, by the way. Hailstorm on the right side, Daniel Scali. And I'm just guessing that Eamon Zayed, the Hailstorm coach, would have said, you know what, guys, keep it tight, defend well. And you know what, last 10 minutes, if it's nil-nil or if we're on level, if it's 1-1, whatever it is, then let's get some balls in the box and try and get a winner. But other than that, those white shirts, they'll be comfortable at nil-nil, get behind the ball, defend well. That's what Eamon Zayed said he wanted from his team, a good defensive performance, and he, that's exactly what he's got. So far, Everton will ping it to the right side. Glad plays it up. This is promising here for Real Salt Lake. And pass attempt once again blocked. We'll go over for a throw. Bodie Davis will make his way over. Salt Lake 3 2 and 3. They're six in the MLS Western Conference. They will play at Portland Saturday at 10 p.m. It's a very tight window with matches. And this is a story for pretty much everybody here in the U.S. Open Cup. Don't forget the draw for the fourth round tomorrow at noon Eastern Time. Just about 13 hours away. You can catch it live at ussoccer.com. Everton touches it wide to the left. Pierre Reedy. And again, Gary, the cross, just nobody in the vicinity for Real Salt Lake. Yeah, it's a poor quality cross from Pierre Reedy. He's got to pick someone out. You can't just put it in there and hope someone's on the end of it. You've got to see where they are. You've got to have the ability to, to rip it in. And I think a yellow card has been given for possible time wasting here. Let's have a look. And was it for the foul itself or was it for the time wasting that followed? Not sure at this moment. And it will be Norte Norti from London in the Chelsea Academy. Let's see. And stopping in the taking of a quick free kick and he's saying, well, hang on a second. I mean, he played it into me, which he did. Clever from Bessler to knock it into Norti. Norti last year played for Queen of the South in the Scottish Championship level. 160 matches played in the English National League as well. I think it's a problem for Hailstorm, just off the top of your picture, the hamstring strain. I think it was Vanekor Decker as he was trying to run around the defender. He suddenly clutched the back of his leg. Reedy will play it back. Garcia chipped up inside the 18. Once away, once again headed away. Yes, that is the story. I think his day is done. Generally, when you, when yeah, he's, we are rubbing that right hamstring, when that sort of happens, then it's very difficult to continue. And you always do the same play, right, Gary? Like you always stretch it, just hoping <laughs> it's a cramp of some part, but but you know it's you a know, hamstring. You yeah, know, you feel it straight away. <laughs> and the point is, with, with those, is you know, if you feel it, then to play on is is risky because you can make it a hell of a lot worse. So. But let the medics decide what they can and can't do. Always that hopeful stretch that maybe magically it'll make it go away, but 
never seems to be the case, at least when it is a hamstring. So the athletic training staff, Northern Colorado will make their way out as Eman Zayed looks on. He's got a couple of options on the bench. Danny Robles, who was signed from Tacoma Defiance, the Seattle 2 team, 20-year-old. He might be an option should they need to make a change. And also, they can be more attack-minded as well. And throw on Jerry Dadoon, who got the goal against Colorado Springs switchbacks that got them to this stage of the tournament. 21-year-old Haitian. Court Decker, he won the USL League One Championship with Union Omaha, who beat Chicago Fire yesterday evening, as I like to say. He's the 2020 League One All Second Team performer, led League One in assists. Vanacourt Decker doesn't want to come off. This is a magic moment for him, but I don't think he has much choice. And Jerry Dadoon getting ready, the goal scorer, as mentioned from that previous Open Cup match. So if he comes on, that's an extra attacking option for the USL League One side. Yeah, got to be bitterly disappointing for Vanacourt Decker. Have to come out of this match. But as you said, some firepower coming off the bench. Ride Dune make his way in. 18 matches for San Diego 1904 of Nisa last season. So he will have to wait to come in. You get a good look too at Rio Tinto Stadium there in the background. Beautiful facility. Real Salt Lake. Tate Schmidt with it. Hesitates. Everton collects it. Schmidt will move towards the corner. Greedy. Work it back up top and work it back out. And we'll try it again with Reedy. Back up top one more time. Bessler. He will get it back. Everton. Tate Schmidt will send it back again. All those white shirts and that deep block, and one third of the pitch, the defender, the defensive third, make it very difficult for any space to be found by RSL. Here's Everton making a move. Still with the possession. Looking for some assistance. Nearly turned it over. Now. It's touched up ahead. Scali along that touch line. It's 2v4. T tried to go ahead with it. On his way to Lukic. Lissy. 1v1. Can he make a play? T service in. He's headed back. It's taken away, Christopher Garcia. This is where they're vulnerable. If they can transition quickly here, RSL, they can catch most of those wide shirts up the pitch, but they haven't. And Arthur Rogers did the job, Gary. Stop yeah. that counterattack, Cole. Scotty there just also getting involved. And here is that substitution. Dune makes his way in. There's Everton one more time. Schmidt, the touch. Keeps it in. Again, he's working against a couple of defenders. Everton has it. Wall goes down. The crowd boos. <laughs> it's pretty much the checklist, right? Yeah, pretty much. And, uh, the crowd, the crowd booing is something that RSL have to be aware of because when we spoke to the coach of Hailstorm, Eamon Zayed, he said, "You know what? The longer this goes, the more the crowd will start to get itchy." We saw that against Colorado Springs Switchbacks, and the 
crowd want and expect their home side to do well. And the longer it goes without something happening, the more pressure is placed on the home side. And I think we might start to see that soon where the, the fans start to lose a little bit of patience. Because to be fair, if, you, if you're there to watch RSL and they're playing a USL League One team, you know, from the third level versus you at the top level, the assumption is you're going to win the game. I mean, they've, they've only ever lost once against lower opposition at home in the Open Cup. That was against Minnesota Stars, who were then from the NASL. They lost 3-1. Otherwise, it's six wins, one draw. So they're expected to win. And the longer it goes without them scoring, the more these fans are going to get a bit jumpy. And that's by design. By Iman Zayed, their coach, says, hey, the longer it goes, the more the screws turn, the more the screws turn, the higher the pressure. <laughs> There's levels to it. I mean, there are a couple of players that you, you think must come on for, for, for Real Salt Lake at some times. And Cordova off the bench, Michael Chang, those are two players. Oh, kick the ball away, trouble. That's a yellow Cornwall. So there's a couple of options for RSL to bring off the bench to, to impact the game positively and, and to make things happen should they need it. Free kick was given, but that was not why the yellow card was. That was Cornwall's kicking the ball away. And again, it's a silly yellow card to get, especially for a defender, because now you miss time a tackle, you get a second yellow, you're off, and then your team is battling. And that's the last thing a Hellstorm would need against the talent of Real Salt Lake. Ball chipped ahead. Michael Send. Able to do much with it. So Breck Evans will have a rather methodical walk to the touchline for the throw in. Let's take another look at the yellow. Whistle. Nope. That's silly, isn't it? I mean, well, especially don't take the risk. Gary, you talk about this all the time as a defender. Yep. In particular. Yeah, because you want to keep that yellow card in your pocket so that when you have to bring someone down on the edge of the box, you can do, and then you take the yellow because you're doing it for the team. But that's just a silly one to give away. Dune. The double team arrives. Switch. All the way across. Ball out. A throw coming up for the hailstorm. So we get to the two-thirds point, and Eamon side will be going, right, we're bang on track. This is where we wanted to be, level, clean sheet. And now they start maybe causing a few more problems if they can, if they can get the throw in back. This is, uh, a bit, this is where RSL need to counter quickly. When all these white shirts are forward, if you get possession, you want to you use the pace and speed of players like Chris Garcia up front wherever you can. But not easy when these white shirts keep Keep digging in and winning, winning ball and winning possession. That ball slotted ahead. Austin FC, San Antonio FC now level at one. USL Championship side drawing even. That's your MLS counterpart. That ball will trickle over the line. Five minutes left. Regulation time. I think we saw some action down on the on the pitch side there with substitutes for RSL and it as I said I wouldn't be surprised if Cordova, Michael Chang, players like that attacking options who, who can impact this game because it's just there's just something lacking there. 10, 15 minutes of the first half where they looked the home side looked really good in attack, they were threatening, and then since then it's it's been ponderous, it's been slow. And I'm sure Pablo Mastroni is, is thinking that I, I need to change that, I need to liven things up in attack. Mastroni looks like he's going to go with a hockey <laughs> hockey substitution. Yeah. There's at least three players lined up. Ready to come in. It's, it's beginning to get embarrassing for him because Hellstorm actually looking more and more confident, more and more solid. As it goes on, you're, yeah. you're absolutely 100% correct. There's a confidence growing within Hellstorm FC. I mean, if you just watched the last 10 minutes, you wouldn't, thought, you wouldn't have thought Hellstorm... Uh, Hellstorm rather are from the, the USL League One. You would have thought they were an MLS team. They've, they've been equally as competent as RSL. They've looked positive in attack. 
just based on the last 10 minutes. And that's, that's got to be worrying for Pablo Mastroni. comes out. That's when Malkelson, Caldwell comes in. Ziel Orozco in as well. Justin Glad will come out, as does Everton. This is an important next 10 minutes or so for the home side because with the fresh players on and the more attacking options, this is their time for them to get on the front foot. If they can't do it in the next 10 minutes, then they run the risk of a late goal and being knocked out the tournament. If they concede a late goal, so Cordova in particular, you want to get him on the ball, you want to get him running at the defense of the Hailstorm. get a whistle and the flag is up. I think that's the answer to your question though Gary. Real Salt Lake just in that singular possession there look a lot more attack minded. They have to be and it's the energy of having three players coming on as well that, that also invigorates the rest of the team. That's why you've got to use the, the next 10 minutes to have that impact. If they fail to get the breakthrough then it really gets to be a nervous last 15 or 20 minutes or so. Worked really hard, Hailstorm, so probably a little rest now is, is most welcome. There was just a coming together of players. I don't think there was anything malicious about it. Certainly didn't see anything. But as a player, I think they'll be very happy just to take this little breather. Storm FC, I think, are they they're pointing up to the video board perhaps? Take a look at the replay. He's saying it was a deliberate elbow. But even if the referee doesn't have a look, the pressure they're applying, they're just getting in the referee's mind that they've been hard done by, that it's the wrong decision, and referees are human, and you know they, they, they can feel the effects, and they worry that they've made the wrong decision, and they might just favor the hailstorm on the next decision. And that's what you're pushing for as a player. <laughs> Coach Heyman Zayed is enjoying the moment. He's probably thought this game through a hundred times and thought the last thing he wants is to be 5-0 down and taking a bashing. Well, a nil-nil in the 65th minute, he couldn't be more happy, Heyman Zayed, because his team are capable of scoring. Look at the number of white shirts in the attack here. They're not sitting back there. They definitely believe they can come away with the win here tonight. And why not? They've executed the game plan to a T so far, which sometimes is not the easiest thing to do when it's defensive centered, defensive minded. Sometimes you get a little bit edgy. You want to jump up into the attack. Hailstorm FC, they've fallen right in line. And as I said, they've ex executed this game plan to perfection. Yeah, with the, and the fact they're a new franchise, and this is only their fourth game in their history, and these players don't know each other that well. I mean, that's, a, that's an incredible achievement even to get this far and to play this well. Yeah, they're getting turnover ball, the team in white, and <laughs> there's a buzz about them. I, you know, I'm sure Eamon Zayed said, guys, if we're halfway through the second half, then you start to go for it. You go look for a win, and that seems to be what they're doing. Smalley steps through was inside the 18, but the foul was called before the shot. Let's 
see it again. Yeah, it's a bad touch. It runs away from him, and then you can see him just push this. Like that. There's no question that's going to be a foul. But again, you've got to put yourself in the shoes of the Northern Colorado Hellstorm players. This is a dream game for them against MLS opposition. And they're just thinking, wow, we're in, with, we're in with a real chance here. Their adrenaline's flowing. They've got more energy than they thought they would have at this stage of the match because they know that they can, they can get something out of this match. Oh, he's locking up everywhere. Got to be careful. He's on a yellow, Naughty. <laughs> they're giving him attitude as well. That was a very <laughs> risky play, though, by Norti. As you said, on a yellow, there's just there's not a lot of point to doing that. Yeah. Very, what, very what's careful. the goal? You know, that's my question. What's I, the goal? I think the goal is to get in their heads, and they're beginning to do that now. They're, 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 they're having a few little words between each other. and That's what Nor Norti's getting told. Hey, you have a yellow, man. Yeah. Well, he needs to step away. If, if they're, if they're going to get in the faces of RSL, he's got to let other players do it. He's the one player who can't do it. But he, does, he, didn't, he didn't tackle. He stepped across the ball, and he used his body strength. So I don't think it was worthy of a yellow. But as you say, he's got to be careful. Yeah. Here's Tate Schmidt. Service inside the 18. Bonnie's going down. RSL wants a point to the penalty spot. They will not get it. The yellow this time. That's getting a bit chippy now, isn't it? Yes, it is. This is the pressure building. This is what Eamon Zayed, the Hailstorm coach, said. You know, as, as you mentioned as well, as this match goes further and further, the crowd will start to turn a bit. The pressure starts to build, and they're, they're quite happy to mix it, Hailstorm. I don't think they have any problem getting stuck in and bumping heads because they've got everything to gain and very little to lose. Flicked ahead. Orozco. Track back to collect it, does well to keep it in. And here on the run, can Garcia close out on it? He cannot. Orla down right now. This ball gets cleared straight back to a white shirt. Very impressive for a League One side, USL League One. Very impressive what they're doing at the moment. Gary, they have seized control of this match over the last 12, 15 minutes. They certainly have. Cornwall has that blocked. But it goes right to Scali. His service across. Volley attempt! Oh! The strike is true! And Hailstorm FC take the lead. What a strike by Rob Cornwall. Fantastic from the Cats, and what a volley. The pressure was building from this USL League One side, but what a finish from Robert Cornwell. Gave David Ochoa absolutely no chance, but the build-up was coming. Ball gets knocked in here. They're fighting for it at the far post. It drops to the captain. What a strike. Absolutely brilliant off the post. They've been forcing this, and they're fighting for every single ball that goes in there. Was there a slight deflection on the way in? Hard to see. Either way, the captain is taking all the glory. And the USL League one side are now 1-0 up in this Open Cup match and with a real chance of going through to the next round. Rio Tinto Stadium has gone silent. That ball served out of play. So now we'll see Hailstorm FC be very deliberate the rest of the way. It's a disaster for Pablo Mastroni. I think he could see it coming. That's why he made the subs. He wanted to invigorate his side, but what they've, what they've produced just hasn't been good enough for an MLS outfit. And now 
Hellstorm will throw everything on the line to defend this lead. Oh, he's lucky he got that tackle right, otherwise that could have been a red card there for Arthur Rogers. Did stop the attack. Caldwell. Well, Storm FC trying to dig in. Here's Garcia again. And the cross cut out. Something that our manager used to always say to us when we went into FA Cup matches. When you're playing lower opposition, you've got to you've got to beat them early on. You've got to get one or two up and, and kill their spirit, and then it then it generally is an easy match for you because you've got the ability. But when you struggle to break them down and they, their hope starts to grow and they, they realize they can actually beat you, then you're in trouble. Service into the box. And that goes over top. Salt Lake starting to play with more desperation. In the 73rd minute, Neil Rule, Gary Bailey with you. Happy to have you with us. If you're just tuning in, business has picked up, to say the least. Neil Storm FC in the USL League One with the 1 0 lead in an MLS stadium. Just look at the body language of RSL getting back. They're jogging back into position. You can't do that. A, you can't do it when you're at this level, in my opinion, if you're an MLS side. But you can't do it when you're 1-0 down in an open cup with 17 minutes left. They were just jogging back into place. If you're the manager now, you're jumping up and down. You'd be fuming with these players because what you want is extra energy, extra commitment, get stuck in when you're 50-50s, chase back. You've, you've got to up the, imp, uh, the sort of tempo. You can't allow Hailstorm to see this out easily. Michael Chang comes in. Facing Pierre Reedy. Pablo Ruiz comes in as well. Sure the managers had a word in their ear beforehand and said guys you get in there and you make stuff happen you get in people's faces and you've raised this energy so let's see how that works Ruiz a veteran for 62 matches played for Real Salt Lake just signed a contract extension through 2025 we'll see how the energy changes Real Salt Lake, Orozco makes his way back. Orozco just 17 years old out of Mexico. Ball sent up ahead, that connects. Tate Schmidt goes back to the right foot. Schmidt with the pass, and it's played out of the 18. Service back in, that's headed away. Schmidt drives it up. Flicked out on harm's way, at least temporarily, by Lukic. All of those white shirts are in that final third of the pitch, defending every little bit of space they can, winning tackles. Robert Cornwell headed that one out 30 seconds ago, and he's going he's gonna to fight. He's got the winning goal, and it's a great goal. He's going to fight to make sure they keep this clean sheet. Yeah, sent across in. That header will go just wide off the frame. Getting in the mix was Chang, who just checked in. Chang also, in 51 matches played for Real Salt Lake, has a couple of assists this year. Justin Norman will come in. The Colorado Hailstorm. They need some fresh legs. Stefan Lukic has, has been working really hard up front, but there's only so much you can give and need somebody with 
bit more energy to come back on the or come on the pitch and run around and do some closing down because the last thing you want if you're a hailstorm is to try and defend you've got to get on the ball as well you've got to lessen the pressure get in the opposition half and try and get free kicks and just take a bit of pressure off your defense Salt Lake up against it. They're moving to extra time. San Antonio FC drawing level. One opportunity for Real Salt Lake. And that is fired over top of the frame. I believe it was Rubio. Got that shot off. Still allowing this long ball to, to bounce in the box. A little bit dangerous there from Leo Follow, the number five. He was always playing catch up there. And from that tight angle, it was always going to be difficult for Rubio to score. But you don't want to allow balls to, to drop in your box. If you're Olsen, you want to just knock this long. Just get it in, in the opposition half. Let big Lachlan McLean try and fight for the, the high ball. and booms it out of there. 78th minute. Real Salt Lake up against it, down a goal. Christopher Garcia swings it in, headed back, stepping in, and it's cleared out at the last possible moment. It's offside, but still great defending there at the back by a hailstorm. This is, this is a tough situation for Arisal because they've got something now. The visitors, they're going to hold on to it. They're going to throw their bodies in the line. Risky tackle, though, to be fair. You go sliding in, Breck Evans, and if you don't get that ball, then it's almost a certain penalty. Thomas Olsen doing that, that walking jog as slowly as he can to the ball. <laughs> I call it being deliberate. Yeah, yeah that, that's what it is. <laughs> Also booms it three quarters of the way down the pitch. And here's Garcia again. How much longer can Hellstorm FC continue to deny? Cordova just checked in. Cordova goes down. Clever from Cordova there. Just waited for the contact and went down. Once again, that move starting with Garcia. He's been the real bright spark in this RSL team tonight. Cordova on loan from FC Augsburg in the Bundesliga. Restart curled in. Chang with the sprint to the corner, cuts it off. Chang service in. That goes to Garcia. Garcia lines went up. That shot is blocked. Ruiz. Once again out wide. Chang. Service into the box. That's headed away by Ulysses. Now Salt Lake. <laughs> Real pressure on here. the attack, <laughs> to say the least. It's wave after wave of, 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 of efforts coming in here from the home side. I guess their fans are saying, why couldn't you play like this from the beginning? But it's very difficult early on. You, you, you feel you've got the whole match in which to win it. Now with 10 minutes left, you, you can throw the kitchen sink at it because it's whether you lose 1-0 or 2-0, if your RSL makes no difference, you've got to get back in the match. So it's worth taking the risk, throwing an extra body forward. And conversely, uh, Hailstorm are prepared to get behind the ball and defend more. So it allows for this wave of wave of attack. But they're winning every header in the middle of the box. So maybe the, the crosses need to not be so high. They need to be whipped in in that corridor of uncertainty between goalkeeper and defenders. That one whipped in. Again. Storm FC standing tall. Garcia leaves it off. Offside Ruiz. He's not able to turn it around as it was blocked out. Another corner kick coming. Looking for a lucky break now as well. The home side, maybe a handball, a push, a penalty, a deflected shot. Anything. They'll take anything right now. Ruiz, corner service towards the back post. That's headed up, 50-50 ball. Comes free, and that shot. Missed high and wide by Rubio. Wow. 
I'll tell you what, Gary. As soon as Pablo Ruiz came into this match, everything has changed. He has been good. He certainly has been good, but it's 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 also the fact that they they've got the goal now, Hailstorm, and they're trying to defend it. Rubio with a great chance there. He hits it with so much power, just a little bit off target. They're not going to get many chances, and they need to take one that comes along, and that was a good one. I just think if you're Pablo Mastroni and you've, you've had this 6 0 hammering in the last match against NYCFC, and you've, you've had two losses and two draws in the last four, that's a sort of form that doesn't look good and then you add if they were to lose this you would add a loss to that it's the pressure starts to build on coaches you know how tough it is to keep your coaching job under those circumstances so he'll be wanting to turn this around desperately with the manager not good for business nope no. never is never is doesn't matter how well he did last year and how popular he is amongst the fans all those things help to some degree but ultimately it's really about results and losing here against a League One opposition, a Tier 3 team, would not look good for the coach. Rosco plays that one up towards the right side. Rubio sends it back. Ruiz. Schmidt. Crosses over. Everybody back for Hailstorm FC. That was Chang. Losing the possession, but Ruiz takes it back. Ruiz lets one go! Over top of the crossbar. Wow, what a shot from Ruiz. Absolutely brilliant. The power behind that effort. It just, just, he wins the tackle first. You give him credit for that. But it just goes over the crossbar. He's absolutely thumped that. And I think it was dipping at the end as well. And you can see the reaction of Thomas Olsen saying, you cannot let him shoot from there. Because the goalkeeper was scrambling. But that clock is still ticking. No matter how well Ruiz has done, he hasn't hit the target. He hasn't made the goalkeeper have to make the save. That is the bottom line. Here comes Chang into the 18, just toe poked away over the line for a throw. Rick Evans doing so well because once you put your toe in there, you don't want to contact, make contact with anybody's ankle because of possible penalty. So you've got to be extremely deliberate, if that's the right word that you use in the box there, to not make any mistakes. I think you coined the key phrase there, Gary, shot on target. Salt Lake's had 14 shots, only two have been on target. Very return rate. Nessler wings it into the box. Once again, cut out, played out. I'd like to know how many headers they've won RSL because from what I can remember, the last sort of 10 crosses, all 10 have been won by the Hellstorm. They have they've put commitment there. Robert Cornwell's been absolutely brilliant. So is Leo Foller, Breck Evans, Ulysses at the back, and the goalkeeper coming to clutch. You know what, if you're desperate in a cup match, they've got to win one or two of those, Real Salt Lake, and I don't think they have done. One, two. Norman, into the 18. Norman has it taken away. That foul will be called. 86 minute, 1 0. Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC out of USL League One with the lead over Real Salt Lake here in Rio Tinto Stadium. Neil Rule, Gary Bailey with you. Happy to have you with us. Cornwall scored a banger in the 70th minute, and that is where we stand. More service into the box. Caldwell makes his way out. Rogers, he does the job. But a giveaway in space. Look at that white shirt winning everything. Absolutely every ball that goes in. But they've got to keep going. RSL just takes one cross that the white shirts don't get. One decent ball in. One flick on at the near post from a corner. And they can be on level terms. But time is running out. And this guy serving the corner as well. Pablo Ruiz. In swinger. Headed. 
Goal kick awarded. That's the first cross I've seen RSL win in the last sort of 10 or 15 that have been put in there. So maybe desperation creeping into the home side. Now we're seeing some cramping. He's saying he wants to be substituted, so I don't think this is for effect. I think he's really feeling it, and I'm not surprised. They've worked so hard up and down, defending, throwing their body on the line. It's been absolutely brilliant from this Northern Colorado Hailstorm team, and their coach has got to be proud of them, Eamon Zayed, the owners, the fans, and I'm assuming not too many because it's a new franchise, only on their fourth match. And even some of these RSL fans watching will will appreciate the effort from this USL League One team you win this match here tonight you'll scoop up some new fans yeah There's absolutely no question absolutely well considering that both their matches have been away from home the first one against Colorado Springs switchbacks who were top of the USL at the time and played a fair chunk of their top players and now they come away from home a second time and on the verge of getting another win against MLS opposition so wow if they win this, it would be two fantastic wins. We'll see if there was, in fact, a substitution. The stretching out continues. He's been down that long. You wouldn't think that he could keep playing. He seems to be in a lot of pain. Yeah, they're saying, surely we have to substitute him if he's, if he's that... It's that sword. It looks like their substitution's going ahead. Danny Robles. Looks like will be the one. To make his way into the match. So they will get the stretcher. It's hard to believe it's just from cramp. I mean, it must be really bad cramp. If you can't move at all, you wonder if there was something else that happened, whether he got a, a bit of a knock at the same time. But if it is cramp, it just shows you the commitment that they've put in these players. With the Rogers, and also too. This hurts Hailstorm FC. Arthur the Rogers has been brilliant defensively here tonight, in particular. But they all have. They all have. Well, exactly it's been right. Phenomenal how well this Hailstorm team has played. Absolutely brilliant. For a franchise that's only in its fourth game. <laughs> to pull this together, the coach Eamon Zayt to got them to play as well as, as they have together. It's a phenomenal performance. And you almost feel from a neutral perspective that they deserve to go through just because of what they've put in so far. Pitch. Scully is able to win it. More valuable time. As we move towards stoppage time. It'd be a good chunk, I would imagine. There will be nine minutes of stoppage time. What a stoppage time to have added. And it gives the home side a bit of hope. Did he not make himself in? He did. <laughs> side said, seriously? A couple of minutes here, a couple of minutes there, but nine? Nine minutes, as we said. It's 20% of a half, Gary. I'm not a huge math guy, but even I can figure that one out. So we'll go against Scully. And then Scully will get a yellow as well. Played for Bofar Athletic. Spanish League One. Given, actually, Robles was given the yellow, as you see, kicking the ball away. 
That's the second yellow they've got for kicking the ball away. Yellow card issue to Hellstorm FC's bench as well. Yellow's mounting. The Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC dig in for about seven and a half more minutes. Oh, and Garcia nearly found its mark. And the turn and burn clearance by Fola. Well, if you're the marketing person at North Northern Colorado Hailstorm, and you were wondering how best to sell your team, well, <laughs> stress no, no longer. If they win this, it's the best marketing you could ever do. I mean, everyone's going to be talking about Northern Colorado Hailstorm if they can hold on for the next seven minutes or so. And just as we've seen all night, Breck Evans knocking down the cross. Cross after cross, knocked down, deflected out, out for a corner. Flag goes up. Offside, Garcia, player as good as you should know. Once you throw that ball, you've got to get into an onside position. Problem with that for Real Salt Lake, that'll kill about 30 seconds. A little bit longer, if, yep. if, uh, if judging by Thomas Olsen's slow run. The official telling him, hey, get it rolling. If you're Olsen, you want to bang this as far down as the pitch as you can possibly reach. Olsen can do just that. Up by Pola. Once again, the is Oof. going everywhere. an eye on things here this is going to get really really physical here towards the end as desperation creeps in for rsl another another free kick another chance to slow the clock down and and maybe even get a second if you put it in the mixer big lachlan mclean there and you get a decent ball in who knows the right side over top of everybody It is realistic for them to be tired this early in the season, and, but you also know that it's a way of slowing things down. Obviously, you don't waste time because time gets added. What you do, though, is you slow the momentum. It seems to be absolutely fine now, so you can make your own conclusions about how injured he was. Good work with the white shirts, closing, 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 making it difficult, forcing Chora into a quick kick. Ruiz did well to settle that thing down and move it. And move it he did to the right side. Now Salt Lake desperate for a goal. Bessler, Tate Schmidt heavy with the touch, goes back to Bessler. Rosco. Ball winged in, the 18 punched out. Good by the goalkeeper as well, Thomas Olsen, just helping out his defenders and took out a few attackers in the process. Turnover ball once again. It's touched away. Orozco, but following up on it, and tons of space. Okay, Dune is taken away from behind. He was in a good position, though, Dune. If he gets a good first touch, he's in on goal there. Here comes Garcia. Garcia slots a pass, cross, played away one more time. Rubio was lurking, but could never get a taste of it. Leo Follow there with a clearance. You can see how pumped up this team is. I'm loving this team more and more as I watch them because that's a dangerous ball in. And Leo Follow makes a great clearance, and then his centre-back partner, Robert Cornwall, comes across and hugs him. Unbelievable performance by the Hailstorm. Ruiz triggers the corner, and that one's headed away again. They have answered every single question here tonight, has Northern Colorado. 
If they can hang on three minutes, they deserve to do a lap of honor with their manager, Eamon Zaid, and soak up the atmosphere because this has been a fantastic performance from beginning to end by this new franchise in their fourth only game. Schmidt wings it in. And it out by Norman. Look at that, winning Here the headers. Counter. Winning the headers in midfield, winning the 50-50s. It's a foot race, and Orsco will win. Pablo Ruiz. Ahead. I guess as the flag would have went up. <laughs> Finding every every way in the book to try and run the clock to eat. even if it's a second, right, Gary? Yeah. Even if it's one second, and then bang, you, you keepers will do yeah, it. Won't so you? We'll do whatever we got to do. <laughs> Knocks it up. They keep winning there. They win possession again. You, know, you, you can very easily pick fault with RSL, but to be fair, they've come up against just the most inspired performance by the house team. There's Cordova inside the 18. He gets the, gets the goal kick as well. I'm thinking, as, as he's making that tackle, Leo Follow, I'm thinking, be careful, don't give a penalty away. Right. Not only that, he wins the goal kick. Nelson picks now to need a drink of water. It's less time to take a quick look at it. It's a risky one. And He's a dangerous player, Cordova, and getting in there. And I'm thinking that moment, careful. The ball. Didn't get much of the ball. He just got enough. There you go. Win that ball. Win the ball again. They're winning all the 50-50s at a time when they shouldn't be, when RSL should be winning them all. And here's Garcia making a run. In the dying moments, Garcia into the 18. Garcia's shot is blocked. We'll send it back. Service into the box one more time, and that will go across the goal line. And this will be damaging to Real Salt Lake's final chances here. But Pablo Ruiz was walking out there. How, how are you walking out? You've got to sprint out, get yourself onside. You can't be walking out saying, I'm in an offside position. You shouldn't be offside, surely. I have a lot of question marks that, that have to be answered after this by RSL, but I'm not going to focus on that. Yeah, I'm focusing on him, Eamon Zayed and his team, because this has just been marvelous to watch. Wilson it's just a, got a yellow. fairy story. And to think they did something similar against Colorado Springs switchbacks away from home against a team that won every single game in the USL up to that point. It's been the second of two incredible performances. Not one, the second of two. The dying seconds of this one. Schmidt turns around. It's our time for one more push for Freal Salt Lake. Ruiz into the 18. Cordova knocks it down, and it's played out. Turning with it. Here come Hailstorm FC. De Dune stops. Garcia over, he'll throw it in real quick. Garcia, one more ball into the box. And Olsen will shepherd that one over the goal line. The final whistle sounds, and Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC shocks Real Salt Lake in Rio Tinto Stadium with a 1-0 victory in the U.S. Open Cup third round. Can I say it? Hail the hailstorm. Absolutely brilliant. And even Pablo Mastroni must say he must and he's be able to say what a fabulous performance by them. Yes, RSL were not good on the night. They weren't horrendous, but they just weren't good. They didn't create enough chances. But the, it's just been a phenomenal performance by that man in particular, Robert Cormel with the goal and his defense. Yeah, no wonder he's celebrating. Stay it on the pitch. Stay there, Hailstorm. Walk around. Soak it up. You deserve every single moment, both every player and the coach, Eamon Zaid. Absolutely brilliant. Huge victory for Hailstorm FC. We talked to Eamon Zaid earlier this week.
and Gary, his side, ran the game plan to perfection. Yeah, he said keep it tight, defend well, and then towards the second half, we'll start to put pressure on and try and get ourselves a goal, but did they defend? And what a goal they got, by the way, as well from Robert Cornwall. Cornwall scored an absolute banger as we take a look at the highlights from tonight's match. And Gary, when you boil it all down, there just was not enough questions asked by Real Salt Lake in this one here this evening. 100%. That was a cross caught by Thomas Olsen. That's one of their highlights. This one here was a, a missed place cross that Olsen just pushed around the post. So there hasn't been one effort as yet. Keep an eye on it. This one here was their best chance. Pierre just knocking it over. But again, good defending. It didn't hit target. Olsen didn't have to make a save. But look at the game. Bester just setting that one up. That was their best chance. And then, and then it was all about Hailstorm. This ball gets knocked in. They fight for it. It comes out. And look at the volley from the captain, Robert Cornwall. What a strike this is. Absolutely brilliant. But it comes from a ball in. It comes from challenging for the ball. It comes from their defender being on the edge of the box. And then it was just bodies everywhere. Defend everything. Fight for everything. Win every 50-50 they possibly could. That one just dropped for Rubio. Another, another little half chance that wasn't taken. This was an effort from about 30 yards out. Brilliantly struck by Pablo Ruiz, but again, didn't hit target. And as you quite rightly say, they didn't make Thomas Olsen work anywhere near enough. Look at that, two shots on target, the whole match for the home side, not good enough. And that is the bottom line. 16 shots for Real Salt Lake, only two on target. And as you said, Gary, did not work here tonight. Another cup set, if you will. Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC, they are moving on. The draw is tomorrow at noon. Hailstorm FC, they'll be watching. And you can too at ussoccer.com. That will do it here tonight for our broadcast for Gary Bailey. My name is Neil Rule, reminding you one final time. Northern Colorado Hailstorm FC, the 1-0 win over Real Salt Lake. Thanks for watching, everybody. Well, see you later.